Welcome everyone, my name is Kerry. In this video, I'm going to show you Python code that I wrote to scrape NFL data from a very popular website. Now before we scrape data from any website, it's always a good idea to read the terms of service so that we do not violate their rules. Let's look at our data source. Before we get to the website, let's talk about the pieces of information that we need in order to scrape the data. The first thing, of course, is a URL. Where is a website located? In this example, I'm using profootballreference.com, and you can see the team CRD is for Arizona Cardinals, and 2022 is for that season, and the game log data. The second piece of information we need is a table ID. We're going to read data from tables embedded in the web pages. To make sure that that works, we want to make sure that we get the correct table. We're going to do that by identifying the table by its ID. That's a little bit of HTML, which we'll see here in just a second. Here's the website. If you look at the top here, uh, this is a URL. There it is. This is what I had on the slide there. And this is the game logs table. Lots of great information, a lot of great data, the points scored, the passing, rushing, and so on. Now, what I do when I scrape a table data from a table, I'll go to the upper left-hand corner um, in Chrome, right-click that, and click on Inspect. When I do that, the developer tools come up on the right-hand side, and you can see there is a table tag on the right there, Then it highlights a table on the left that I want to scrape, and it says ID is Game Log 2022. That's information that we're going to use in our code to get the right table. The table right below that is called Opponent Game Logs, and we're going to scrape that table too, because while the first table contains the offensive stats for the team we're looking at, the second table is the offensive stats for their opponents, which of course is the defensive stats for that same team. So here is our code. And of course, the first thing is we want to import the libraries, NumPy and Pandas. In that first cell, in the second cell, I've created a list of seasons, and I want this to be a string, list of strings here, because I'm gonna put that in the URL. And then the next thing here is a list of team abbreviations. These are the three letter codes that the website uses to identify these teams. And if we run this, there's 13 seasons and 32 teams, that's good. Now here is the main code. This is the web scraping code. We're going to import random in time because we're going to, like I said before, pause our program to abide by the rules. We have a main data frame, our aggregate, where we're going to add all of our data to and uh, consecutively. We're going to iterate through the seasons, 2010 to 2022. And for each season, we're going to iterate through those teams. So once we have the season and then the team, we're going to create the URL. It's exactly what I showed you in the slides, what we saw on that website, and where we're going to put the team and the season in that URL string. Step two, this is the web scraping. Pandas, pd.readhtml, that is the work right there. That's the star of the show. The first argument to this function is a URL that we want to access. Now, this particular table has column headings in the first row. So we say header equals one. And here is where we set the ID, the attributes. The readhtml reads tables from that web page. So we want it to just read the table that we want. That's why we bothered by getting the ID there when we looked at the website. And it says attributes equals ID game log plus a season, game log 2022. Now read HTML returns a list of tables. Because we have supplied the ID, we only have one table in that list, but regardless, it's still a table. So we have to um, access it using the bracket notation, bracket zero, and that's the offensive data frame. There's your web scraping right there. Now, the next step here is the same thing, but for the opponent's game log. And you can see it looks very similar to the step two. Uh, the difference there is that the ID is different, and this is the defensive data frame. We're going to concatenate these two data frames across the columns. So in one row, we have offensive stats and defensive stats for the same team. So now we have a team data frame. And because the season and the team are part of the web URL, they're not 
in the table. We're going to add those as columns in that data frame. And then finally, step five, we're going to add the team data frame to our NFL data frame, added by rows this time, concatenate by row. So this just keeps adding each of the team data frames on to the biggest, the bigger NFL uh, data frame. Here is the part where we put our code to sleep randomly between four and five seconds. I've done this many times and it works really well. So I'm not going to mess with that code. And if we run this, you can see I print out the URL so we can see the progress. There are the Cardinals for 2010. Atlanta Falcons and so on. Um, because we pause four to five seconds for each team, there are 32 teams in 13 seasons. That's going to take quite a bit of time. You just kind of let this run in the background, go grab a cup of coffee, whatever, play some solitaire. Um, I'm not going to do this here, obviously, for sake of time. But the very, very last step here is to then save all this data that we just scraped to a CSV file. Say NFL data frame to CSV, and I name mine NFL game logs 2010 to 2022. And of course, we do not want to save the index, we say false here. And finally, just so you can see that this data has been scraped, downloaded, uh, there's what we have so far the parts that I went ahead and, and scraped in this video 80 rows and 74 columns. That's it. If you like this video and got some value from it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm looking forward to many more videos. See you in the next lesson.